In this video, we are going to show you some of the rare photos of Amanda Blake and also tell you some of her untold stories, including the real reason why she was forced to leave Gunsmoke before the final season. Without further ado, let's get started. Amanda's parents had expected their only child to become a stay-at-home wife or maybe choose a more honorable career, but she disappointed them when she fell in love with the stage. This love grew even more passionate by the day, Therefore, Amanda had to drop out of school to pursue her desires. But before she was going to be a famous actress in Hollywood, Amanda survived working as a telephone operator. She finally got her chance when MGM needed a replacement for actress Greer Garson. Amanda came in excited and ready to take over the industry, but she was in for a surprise. As preparation for her success, she changed her name from Beverly Neal to Amanda Blake. The young actress debuted in the 1950 Western film, Stars in My Crown. This was followed up by a dozen unsuccessful movies and television appearances. Her studio was almost running out of patience, but 1955 became the year everyone had been praying for. Amanda met her biggest career success on the set of Gunsmoke, and for the next 19 years, the once obscure actress was America's sweetest heart. I think one of the reasons why viewers adored Miss Kitty was because of how relatable her character was. She portrayed this strong and independent woman, but underneath all that hard exterior was a very soft heart. Another thing we enjoyed watching was her complicated relationship with the Marshal. So it was really sad to hear that she wanted to leave in 1974 and everyone couldn't stop wondering what had happened behind the scenes. There were many rumors, but Amanda Blake left Gunsmoke for two reasons. First, she was tired. The second was that she couldn't keep traveling 610 kilometers from Phoenix to Hollywood every time she was needed on set. There was also a lot going on with her health at the time, but that was not even her major concern. I was tired and it was just time to go, Amanda told the LA Times. 19 years is a hell of a long time to be stuck behind a bar. Life outside Gunsmoke was not as easy as Amanda had thought. The actress had left the show that made her popular and now she was struggling to land good enough contracts. She tried to continue her success streak with the 1988 American drama film, The Boost, but this failed. That same year, Amanda Blake was seen in BORN and this failed as well. Therefore, she decided that it was time to retire. Before this happened, Gunsmoke fans went wild when Blake reprised her role as Miss Kitty in the 1985 television reunion movie, Gunsmoke, Return to Dodge. The years that followed were dark indeed, as Amanda struggled to stay afloat with everything. She got increasingly rare on the screens and after this, the next big news we would hear about her was her death. But before that, Amanda Blake was inducted into the Hall of Great Western Performers for her role as Miss Kitty. She saw it as consolation for the many troubles the show brought her. Amanda always wondered if Gunsmokers was really a blessing, as everyone says, or if it was her curse. She finally got the answer she was looking for on her deathbed, but it was too late for her or anyone else to do something about it. So much was going on with Amanda behind the scenes on Gunsmoke, and a hard to forget event was the day she brought her pet lion to work. It was a chaotic experience. Therefore, the day ended with the production team banning the lion from the set. But this was not the first time Amanda and her cats would be tagged as nuisances. The actress just couldn't help herself around exotic felines. She loved animals. As a matter of fact, Amanda Blake was one of the first people in the world to breed cheetahs in captivity successfully. At some point, she owned five leopards, 10 cheetahs, and a ferocious looking lion. An angry neighbor would sue Amanda and her husband for breeding animals illegally. After several back and forths with the law, she finally got valid permits to keep such pets. Amanda also employed a couple to live on their property to care for the beasts. We don't want them as pets, Amanda argued in People magazine. Our goal is to keep them genetically close to the origins as possible. Before her death, Amanda had bred over seven generations of cheetahs at her home in Arizona. She would pass on all of her research to zoological societies worldwide. The Amanda Blake Memorial Wildlife Refuge in California was opened in 1995 to honor Amanda Blake's work with animals. It serves to provide sanctuary for African wildlife. Amanda Blake had the strongest connections with her cats, but when it came to choosing a life partner, she was not willing to give the same attention. The actress was married four times, and the last time, she ensured she would not live long enough to walk down the aisle again. The only thing she did right about this relationship was make sure she kept it away from the eyes of the media. Amanda's first marriage was with director Don White. 
They tied the knot on August 22, 1954. The actress endured this marriage for two years, after which she decided she had just enough. The couple divorced in 1956. While she refused to reveal the cause of separation, it was easy to figure out that the demands of her career must have put a strain on their relationship, as this was the time when Blake blew up in the industry. Anyway, she tried again with Jason Seymour. Very little is known about her relationship with her second husband except that she divorced him three years into their marriage. Just three days after her divorce from Jason was finalized, Blake exchanged vows with famous producer and writer Frank Gilbert. You might remember Frank for his works in films like Buffalo Bill Rides Again, Lighthouse, and the TV series Tattletales. This was Amanda's longest standing marriage, but unfortunately, after 15 years, they split. Their divorce was finalized in 1982. Blake probably made the worst pick with her last husband, Mark Edward Spieth. Mark was a councilman in Austin City, Texas, and he also owned a real estate investment firm. So Amanda was easily attracted to him. But till today, there is just one question that remains unanswered. Was Mark really attracted to Amanda Blake? The councilman was accused of being a homosexual when he was noticed frequently in the company of known industry gay men. Anyway, all that would not stop Amanda from getting married to the love of her life. But a few years into the marriage, she realized that it was another terrible mistake. In their divorce papers, they cited conflict of personalities as the reason for separation. But secretly, Spaeth was fighting an undisclosed illness. He died of AIDS a few months after the divorce, and unfortunately, Amanda was the next on the list. Many people believe that Amanda contracted the deadly disease from her ex-husband, but others argue that the actress was the one who infected him. Blake's housekeeper, Jane Price, supported this claim when she revealed that the actress had an affair while still married to Spath. All of this was exactly why Amanda hated long-time commitments. They all just come with a lot of drama. Although she had many life partners, Blake revealed that she had never been interested in happily ever after. To her, marriage was just an escape from the rough days in the industry. Even as her parents pressured her to have grandchildren, the actress wouldn't still change her mind. When her last marriage ended, Blake revealed that she never needed a man to be completed. It might sound unfeminine, but I don't need a man to whisper sweet nothings into my ear, Amanda said. When a little girl recognizes me on the streets and asks for an autograph, I get a bigger thrill out of that than when a man says, darling, you look lovely. I know you have thought about this more than once, but Amanda, in one of her last interviews, revealed why a Matt Dillion and Miss Kitty relationship could never work in Gunsmoke. According to the actress, marriage to Matt Dillion defeated the original script of the show. It just didn't make sense. She revealed that she would have loved it herself, but it was just bad. James Arnis was not in any way offended by this. His thoughts were similar too. If you have Matt and Kitty have an on-screen affair, then you know they would have to get married, and then you would have a different show there, James said. To console disappointed fans, Blake emphasized that although Kitty could not marry Matt, their love was still as real as the fans hoped. It was in this interview that she would reveal the real reason she only saw men as objects of entertainment. According to her, she liked the way her life was, and she didn't need any man to interfere with her work as an actress. Her mother was never going to forgive her for this anyway. She said, Amanda is dedicated to her career with a kind of fantasticism, which is difficult for us to understand, she complained. But that's the fact, and we recognize it. Marriage just has no place in her present plan of progress. Amanda also revealed that the closest she ever got to real love was in her relationship with her Gunsmoke co-star, Milburn Stone. On the show, he played her close confidant, Doc Adams. Stone didn't fail to shower his best friend with praise at every opportunity he got. According to him, without Amanda, Gunsmoke would not exist. This was confirmed as the show ended a season after Amanda left searching for greener pastures. While Blake was not patient enough to see this one to the end, Gunsmoke remains her most successful feature. Amanda Blake was familiar with death scares, but one of the scariest moments of her life was when she was diagnosed with oral cancer in the early 50s. The disease came with terrible symptoms, but it was discovered at the earliest stage. Therefore, it was easy to manage. After her bed rest was over, Amanda started her campaign with the American Cancer Society, and this continued until her death. I'm not sure if you know this, but during Blake's rise to stardom, a lot of people argued that she was a racist. They said that she was so extreme that she refused to shoot films if a black person was on set. 
This was an easy one to clear as Blake's lifestyle suggests that this wasn't exactly true. Amanda spent most of her retirement years with wildlife in Africa, and there's just no way this could have happened if she was who they painted her to be. Also, in the episode, The Sisters in Gunsmoke, we saw three African-American nuns who traveled through Dodge to reunite two children. One of them would run into Amanda, and she welcomed her warmly by placing her hands around her before sending her to Marshall. Another quite interesting rumor about Amanda Blake was that she demanded that part of her contract privileges was that she had to be told that she was pretty before she appeared for filming. Again, this is hard to believe, as Amanda Blake just didn't seem like someone who was this insecure. She loved to be in control while still maintaining her feminine nature, and this might have been her most likable feature. It's not the easiest thing to believe, especially considering how she left the show, but Amanda honestly enjoyed her time at Gunsmoke. According to the actress, she was so fond of the series that she enjoyed spending time on set, even when she was not needed for filming. To her, it was home. And even though she left without proper goodbyes, Gunsmoke held a very special spot in her heart. Amanda Blake's childhood mistakes would demand payback at the most vulnerable moments of her life. Amanda, in an interview, revealed that she used to be a heavy smoker. She smoked about two to three packs of cigarettes a day, but the actress was forced to drop the habit after she was told that she had oral cancer. Amanda regretted her decision, claiming that she was just ignorant of the dangers of such heavy smoking. I believe that I would not have smoked had I seen a label on a cigarette package or in a cigarette ad that said, warning cigarette smoking may cause death from heart diseases, cancer, or emphysema. Today, this hint by Amanda Blake is one of the five strongest warnings on cigarette packs and print advertising. Amanda suffered so many symptoms during her final days that it was hard to say what was the true cause of her death. But after several tests, doctors finally confirmed that she died of AIDS-related pneumonia. She died on August 16, 1989, at the age of 60. At the time of her death, she had an estimated net worth of $500,000, according to CelebrityNetWorth.com. If you enjoyed this video, there's a good chance you'll also enjoy the one showing on your screen right now. Click, enjoy, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you on the next one.